Ah, this is the life. Exams are over. I'm back home with my family. I've got my computer and aircon back with me. What else could I possibly need? Hmm? What's this? Oh. Oh, yes! Hello there, fellow random Chaldean master. I see you have stumbled upon my little channel and video here. I assume half of you are enjoying your summer holidays right now. And you should be! Well, the other half is... less fortunate. Regardless, I wish you all a happy summer holiday, no matter what state it may be in. So, how do you think you'll be spending your money during the summer holiday? Maybe using it to go out with your friends and party? Maybe go on a vacation? <laughs> well, of course, you could do that. But if you were an introverted shut-in like me, that's probably not the first thing you'd have in mind. Oh, no, no, no. Instead, you are likely continuing your honorable quest as a proud master of Chaldea taking a pivotal part in the ultimate quest to save mankind from destruction, the Grand Order. Yet we're constantly sidetracking ourselves with killing mobs from materials to upgrade our servants, taking part in random events, and grinding on even more mobs for a short side story, as well as talking to our servants in our room while the world is on the brink of extinction. Huh. Regardless, as you are likely aware, there are always new events and stories coming up, and because of that, there will always be new servants to roll the gotcha for! Whether you are a free-to-play player like yours truly, or a beautiful money-sprouting whale that is willing to feed your wallet to delight works for those sweet, sweet SSRs, you'll always want to know what servants there will be, and whether or not they're worth your rainbow-colored $1 gemstones that are worth more than actual diamonds to us. So, since this is, well, summer, we probably all know what's coming up, and we are all hyped for it. Summer event! Beach! Sunshine! Hot girls and swim <clears throat> So, with the summer event coming up, there will of course be a few brand new servants that will become available to us to roll for. And yes, they are all limited. Do not fret however, as these servants will become available next summer and the one after that. Regardless, each new summer event will shit out even more bikini-clad servants faster than you can get a boner. So it'd be infinitely better if you roll for them now so you don't have to worry about them later. So, with that in mind, what servants will we be getting? Well, this event will have the largest amount of gold servants released out at once so far. A grand total of 7 new servants are going to be out there in their bikinis to be rolled for, all for a limited time. So. You're gonna have to snag one now, or go home really depressed. Now at this point, you're either panicking because you didn't know this, or you're in the other camp who is cringing at this random idiot yelling at his viewers and treating them like they don't know what the fake Grand Order wiki is. Now, if you are part of the three people who are not at least tempted by this banner, then fair enough. But first, finish watching this video, because as the title suggests, I will be explaining to you why you should roll for these servants, just in case you're somehow not enticed with the bargain of owning a servant that's permanently wearing a two-piece. No, you'd be surprised, because these summer servants can legitimately kick ass. Like, honestly. These characters might be joke fan service characters, but despite that, are legitimately great servants themselves in terms of gameplay. However, not everyone will be aware on what they do or how they could use them. That's why I've created this video. To tell you the strengths and weaknesses of each servant, and how to use them should you choose to. I'll give some recommendations on how I would personally use them, and maybe what C's I'll stick with. So I'll put time codes in the description for your convenience, in case you want to know just about one or two servants. Now, there are a total of 6 4 star servants that you can obtain through this event, 5 which will be in the gacha pools themselves, and 2 5 star servants as the grand prize for those favored by Lady Luck herself. The first 4 star servant is Assassin Skahawk. 
who is a free welfare servant that you can obtain by simply playing this event. This is also the same case for getting her ascension materials and getting multiple copies of her to level up her noble phantasm. With that in mind, let's talk about her. Now, Assassin Skahawk is similar to her Lancer version in that she is quick based. Gee, that's a new one. With three hits for all of her cards, and a deck that contains three quick cards. Already, I think you know what's going on with her gameplay, since her star generation is identical to that of fellow four star assassins Ryogishiki and Emiya at 25.6. She can generate an insane amount of quick stars because of that deck and hit count. So if you somehow don't have a quick generator by now, Assassin's Gahawk will fill that role for you, and she will do it very well. On the other hand, her Noble Phantasm gain isn't exactly the most amazing thing out there, and a Brave Chain won't offer much in compensation for that. You're gonna have to rely on other servants and that one Arts Guard to get some decent MP gain. As for the NP itself, it is a quick AoE NP, one that does pretty good damage for its type, and has a chance to inflict death as a side effect. Sound familiar? Unfortunately, it suffers from the exact same problem as my omnipresent waifu's noble phantasm. Simply put, instant death is very unreliable because of the stupid high death resist ratios out there. To make things worse, she isn't like Shiki or Nitokris where they have a skill to increase their death rate, so it'll be harder to get that instant death to apply, especially with a rate as low as 70% when maxed. With its AoE nature, this NP is really best suited for farming and killing mobs, which I really wouldn't call completely ideal with its low NP rate. However, you can still make it work. Another merit to the NP is the amount of crit stars you can generate with it, and its hit count is also pretty decent. Her skills are also relatively interesting. Her taunt skill is kinda wonky, as she isn't exactly a tank with her HP stat, so a taunt skill paired to her main crit damage increase just won't go very well very often. This can still come in handy though if you need to redirect some damage, and can work in conjunction with her second skill. A combo you can consider doing is pairing up her first and third skills, which you can go for MAXIMUM DAMAGE CRITS. Although, I'd more likely use her third skill to buff her Noble Phantasm damage just in case the death inevitably doesn't apply. For potential CEs to use, of course you can always stick the average quick performance up, like Imaginary Round or Gander. But I actually think a healing or defense CE would work decently to help with her taunts usage, like Glassful Sweet Time or Saint's Invitation. I don't think generating crit stars like Be Elegant would do very good, since her generation is already more than good enough on its own. If you want to base her around her crits, try Gem Magecraft to increase her crit damage further instead of crit generation. Overall, unfortunately, I don't think she's a particularly good servant that's easy to handle, as a lot of what makes her viable is heavily reliant on crits, which, while she can consistently generate, is still very RNG based. And the quick star generator has been done many times already in many forms. But despite this, there are still many ways you can use her. For instance, pairing her with a good damage deal to work well could benefit you. Maybe another quick base servant like Ku, or someone simple like Gilgamesh. She should be able to pull off the most quick chains in quick teams, but with her crit gen the way it is, I also don't think that'll be completely necessary since her sole purpose is to make quick stars themselves. Maybe pair her with a team that could use those critical stars, or maybe you could use her critical generation with a Sand Berserker, where her second skill could help with its survivability. Assassin Skahawk ultimately works best as a support quick star generator, to generate quick stars for a team while keeping them alive with her first and second skills. On top of that, she can deal relatively good damage if you take advantage of her quick star generation and quick base deck. Overall, she's gonna take a bit of skill and RNG to use right, and her usages have also been done a bit better by different servants but her abilities can pay off if you use her in the correct way. Not a horrible servant, just one that takes a bit to get the handle of. Now with that out of the way, let's get along to the servants that you'll be rolling the gotcha for. 
This event is split into two parts, and thus has two separate banners, so you'll be rolling for different servants depending on which one you're rolling for. With that in mind, let's talk about the first gotcha. The part 1 banner has the following 4 stars on Raid Up, Ryder Mordred, Lancer Kyohime, Archer Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed, and finally our 4 or 5 star, we have my wonderful fox wife, Lancer Tamo no Mai. First of all, let's talk about Ryder Mordred. Ryder Mordred is an arts based rider, and she has average attack as well as slightly above average HP for your standard 4 star rider. Her HP is only beaten by Marie and Martha for her rarity, but unlike Marie and Martha, she can dish out some considerable damage back. Now coming to her skills, you can see that they're mostly offensive and survivability based. She can use them to make herself live a bit longer, as well as dish some good damage back with arts and crit stars. Her third skill is going to be a bit difficult to get the handle of, since you have to choose between using guts or charging her NP. And while at the beginning of levels, I would recommend you using it to charge NP, during later parts of a mission, where she might be low HP, you're going to have to judge the cooldown right for it to truly help you in a pinch. Now her second skill can actually allow her to become more of a quick hybrid with her surfing passive, as her crit star generation will not be that bad when in use. However, I don't recommend truly relying on this, as this is more of a side effect rather than a true main part of her as a servant. Her Noble Phantasm is an AoE Arts Noble Phantasm with a low chance to decrease NP gauge. The side effect isn't very reliable, as that 50% chance at base feels more like a 20% chance. Although, its AoE nature does mean that you have more targets to hit it at, so you can consider that when you're using it. Its main merit is that Mordred can use it relatively quickly with her arts deck and third skill, as she has relatively good NP gain and her side effect as a quick generator could also work to that advantage. I wouldn't say you're really going to spam it, but if you use it in tandem with her crits and her arts cards, it can work relatively well. Overall, Ryder Mordred is a very simple servant to use, but relatively effective in combat. She's best used in farming missions and can do reasonably well in wave clearing. She will fit into your typical arts teams and thus generic arts buff C's will do the trick. However, if you want to be a bit more interesting, you could make her the main wave clearer of an arts crit team, as her star weight is still very high as a rider. Her quick generation could use a bit more support, so consider a crit generator like Atalanta or Okita. Or, on the other hand, you can go for an arts crit generation like Assassin Emya, or possibly even Assassin Yogi Shiki. Although, if you're going against casters, the latter might be not so ideal. Regardless, Ryder Mordred is a solid 4 star servant. She's not completely amazing, but she still fits the role of a solid 4 star rider if you need one, and makes for an amazing wave clearer. So if you're looking for a wave clearer, possibly to knock down some doors, definitely consider rolling for her. The next servant I'm going to be talking about is Miss Archer and Bonnie and Mary Reed. As a servant, Anne takes the lead now, and she is my personal preference over the two. Archer, Anne, and Mary is quite average as a servant. They have a quite typical deck, as well as reasonably average stats for her class. But more importantly, they've got a similar gimmick to their rider counterpart, which is, if you remember, a high-risk, high-reward Noble Phantasm that hit harder equivalent to how low their HP was. So if they had one HP remaining, that single target Noble Phantasm would do absolutely ridiculous amounts of damage. And that gimmick is sort of replicated here in their Archer counterpart. Granted, it'll be doing less damage as, as Ryder Anne and Mary's damage increase was based on overcharge as well. But in turn, Archer Anne and Mary is a buster servant. That's right, Archer Anne and Mary fits into the beautiful blood red buster meme with an extra red card replacing the green for her deck, which is always a plus in my book, especially since Archer's overall HP and attack stats are higher than her rider counterparts. You know what helps with that Noble Phantasm? Their skills, which are all fantastic on them. They allow them to be a crit damage dealing hybrid similar to their rider counterpart, allowing for them to both create and absorb crit stars with the use of another male critical star generator. Finally, their third skill, and the one that's geared to work the best in tandem with their Noble Phantasm. 
it increases their own attack for three turns and grants them a guts. A guts that allows them to hold on at just one HP. Remember that Noble Phantasm? Remember how it does more damage the lower their HP was? Well, the light worked, sure did, and gave Archer, Anne, and Mary the one thing that the Rider counterpart needed. An equivalent to Pokemon's Endure move. Chain this with their NP, and they will do illegal amounts of pure, unadulterated damage. Of course, this strategy is more effective than it is reliable. Because after Anne and Mary dishes out their overdosing heap of DPS, they're going to be dead faster than you can react. So, definitely keep that in mind. They are effectively a firework. The buildup is insane, and oh my god, they look absolutely fucking stunning for a few seconds. But after that single moment, they'll run out and fall off into nothingness. Which is why I recommend that they should lay in the back row. Maybe with a max out kaleidoscope on the final boss and do tons of damage when they've gotten low. They play relatively well, but they can only truly shine when the risks are high. So keep that in mind. Necromancy might seem like a good idea to use on them, but you're not going to fire off two Noble Phantasms in a row. This ain't Lancer Artoria, I'm sorry. Instead, focus on NP charge and or damage. As I've said, Kaleidoscope works great and lets them fire off their NP when you feel the time is right. The Black Grail is also a good option, as it allows them to lower down their HP while making their Noble Phantasm even more ridiculous. I also recommend pairing him with Ku, as he is a quick based male servant that can benefit from their first skill to generate crit stars, and allow them to absorb them and dish out damage. Another reason is survivability, because after they die, you'll want a servant that can stay alive if it's not enough. And I can't recommend Ku enough for obvious reasons. Another one you could use is Kotaro, as his quick generation is even more insane. And his targetable evade can help him or Anne survive just a bit longer. Even with their risky playstyle, Anne and Mary can be an absolute monster in play. Especially if you eventually get Merlin to buff her Noble Phantasm even higher! Embrace the Buster meta. Now, with Anne and Mary done, let's talk about the last 4 star in the part 1 gotcha. Lancer Kiyohime. Nah, how does she fare in gameplay? Ah, oh, that's right. Her Buster card is absolutely ridiculous. Remember Skahawk? Remember her 6 hit Buster card? Remember how great that was? Well, Kyo has that too. And you know what else Kyo has? Madness Enhancement EX. Basically, while not a huge amount, Lancer Kyohime wields one of the strongest base buster cards in the entire game. Hands down, 6 hit Madness Enhancement EX is fun as hell. On the other hand, her attack stat is less than average, sadly. But that isn't a huge problem for her since her 6 hits do well enough. And since she's a Lancer, her attack modifier is increased a bit so she can deal more damage. So as a parent, she is part of the eternal Buster meta. Long live thy reign. And to help with that, some of her skills are geared to helping with her and her damage dealing. So let's see them. As you can see here, her skills are a bit of a mixed bag. First skill is nearly useless because decreasing party crit chance isn't something you're going to be prioritizing in most circumstances. Her other skills help her be more of an offensive beast, but not without trade-off for her third skill. As you can probably tell, her skills aren't the best, despite the fact that they do ultimately help her with her damage dealing. Yeah, the buster boost is great. Yeah, the def down is nice. But a party-wide crit debuff and increasing attack is not something I'd call ideal. Her Noble Phantasm, though, is very good. It is what ultimately seals her as an above-average servant. First of all, as a buster Noble Phantasm with a buster-based servant, of course that's gonna be nice. So chain away. 
You might think that her deck isn't perfect for this since she only has one arts card, so charging that NP might seem hard, but her base NP gain is actually really good, so doing an arts quick quick chain can help with her NP gain, and even Buster since it has that insane 6 hit count. Second reason is the single fact that it is single target. More damage. The third reason this NP is awesome are the side effects. One of them is to seal your target skills, which can come in very handy, especially if you have an annoying NP charger. Finally, it inflicts burn on your enemies for 5 turns, which is always a good side effect to have. In the end, what can I say? Lancer Kiyohime is a pretty damn good Buster Lancer Serpent. She's not as ridiculous as Lance Toria Alter, but then again, not many 4 star servants are and they don't need to be. She is still an excellent Buster Lancer that will serve you very well. If there's one reason not to roll for her, it's that Summer Raikou comes next year, and she's quite similar. As well as overall better if you ask me. So if you're a fan of Mom, keep that in mind. Still, Lancer Kiyohime pairs well with other Buster servants, so maybe do Zhuan Zong, as her party NP gain skill can help Kiyohime gain that Noble Phantasm even quicker. Since while she does have a good NP gain, she still in the end has only that one arts card, which isn't really reliable. Or you can just stick a Prisma Cosmos on her to fix that issue. But really if you ask me, I'd recommend something that can help her in terms of crits. A good crit generator like Jack, Assassin Emia, Assassin Skillhawk, or even a crit generation related CE like 2030 allows her to take full advantage of that insane buster card. Or maybe you could use Seal Designation Enforcer to increase that subpar crit weight. Remember, Buster Servants became the meta for a reason, and that's because hard hitters can do a lot of work very quickly if you use them well. And Kiyohime Lancer is no exception. And with that out of the way, let us talk about the 5 star for part 1. The lovely, the only, Tamamo no Mai. This time wielding a cute umbrella as another Lancer class servant. So, what does Lancer Tamamo offer? Well, first of all, her stats are kinda high. With a pretty good max attack stat that is only increased by that Lancer modifier, and a very good HP stat. This is already a good start, but let's get to the real good stuff. First off, her deck is pretty solid, with two quick and buster cards and both with a good hit count. It's worthy to note that while she is buster centered, she also works well with a quick servant due to her 4 hit quick card, good star generation, and riding passive. So if you want to use her as a damage dealer in quick teams, she can work well with that. Although as a trade-off, she's not meant to be focused completely on Noble Phantasm generation unlike her caster counterpart. However, her NP gen is still relatively decent, so you're not going to have pre-strengthening quest Astolfo levels of NP charge hell. Her skills are all very good, and are a highlight of her as a servant. They allow her to be a fantastic damage dealing Lancer servant combined with her deck all while able to apply a variety of debuffs with her second skill to an enemy at the cost of making their NP gauge go up. She can also seriously buff herself with her third skill in a variety of ways, but to truly take advantage of one or two of the effects it gives, you might want to bring a support, which weirdly enough, her caster counterpart fits the bill for. Overall, two of her skills have demerits, but also allow for an insane amount of effects to trade off, and unlike Lancer Kiyohime, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives with Tamamo Lancer. Her Noble Phantasm itself is very simple, but very effective. It is a single target buster Noble Phantasm that hits very hard, and it also does even more damage against males specifically. And, uh, it's not hard to see why. Oh, I felt that. If it isn't apparent, Lancer Tamamo is a pretty damn good 5 star servant, with fantastic skills and pretty damn good stats. As a Buster Lancer like Lancer Kiyohime, pretty much anything Buster oriented would work. Slap limited over 0 on her, pair with a good support, and watch heads roll. Again, 
Xuan Zhang could pair relatively well with her if you think her Noble Phantasm gain could use a bit of work due to that single arts card. She can also fit decently into a crit team due to her solid quick card and star gen. Or you could also use her as a crit damage dealer in a buster team. Whatever. If you do decide to use a crit team though, Victor of the Moon is a fantastic choice to put on her. And it's even a good option to put on her regardless of that. She's just very solid in most categories, and extremely versatile as an offensive servant no matter what you want to do with her. She works well with basically any support and anything offensive. She doesn't pair particularly well with arts servants, but other than that, you're gonna have a hard time finding someone who truly doesn't work with her. Because she just offers a lot as a main offensive servant. As a proud fan of my fox wife Tamamo, I'm proud to say that she is still fantastic even in her Lancer form, and that looks aren't everything this fox has going for her. She will not disappoint one bit. And with that, we're done with the part 1 gacha servants. But wait, the part 2 gacha is next, and if you didn't already plan on spending all your quartz, you have another gacha with even more servants that are worth rolling for, so strap in and prepare yourself for the part 2 gacha, where there are two 4 star servants, and again, a single 5 star servant. So there's one less servant here, but there are still good options. Those servants are Ruler Martha, Caster Marie Antoinette, and Archer Artoria. These three are also pretty good, and are absolutely worth rolling. So I'll tell you why. First off, let's start with something more simple. Ruler Martha, who is in my opinion the least impressive of the part 2 gacha. However, she is still pretty good, and it's really more of a testament to the other two servants in the gacha. Regardless, let's begin. First off, her stats aren't too wild, which could be a good thing depending on how you see things. She has slightly higher than average attack, but slightly lower than average HP. Yet, it's not a huge deviation on either part, and it overall balances out. As a ruler class servant, the lower HP isn't as big of an issue, since most of the classes won't really hurt her. As a ruler, she doesn't have any real class advantages except for Moon Cancer, so she'll have to do her best with neutral damage instead. So guess which type of gameplay she's based on. So clearly with this deck, she's a pure, complete, utter offensive servant, and completely focused on that role. Her other cards have good hit counts, but you won't really be relying on them due to her subpar star generation and NP gain. Because of this, definitely bring other servants to fill those gaps in her offerings. She will not be very versatile at all on her own. Her skills are a mixed bag. On one hand, they're pretty good. On the other, it feels like they don't do enough and end up being a bit simple. Her first skill only has an extra effect on beach or waterside fields, and is otherwise just a small NP charge. Her second skill helps with her survivability and debuff immunity, which I guess you can trace back to her rider counterpart, and her final skill gives an insane damage buff to certain types of enemies. The thing is, these skills are very simple and don't do very much other than their base functions. They don't particularly have a lot of synergy with each other, with one being reliant on the BH to function at its full potential. They're not the worst skills out there, but they just don't feel like they complete her as a unit. Her Noble Phantasm, on the other hand, is amazing, for one reason, and one reason only. Do you know what that reason is? She's fucking deal! She pulls off a roll roll with Taras! She's Martha Brando! God damn it, roll for her now! <laughs> Excuse me. Frankly, in all seriousness, her Noble Phantasm is just as easy to understand as her skills and gameplay. Single target Buster Noble Phantasm that does damage and reduces defense. Which she does before she fires it off, which is a good plus, but again, it's very simple. It will hurt. Otherwise, what can I say? It's what you expect from a standard Buster Noble Phantasm. Aside from the obvious options, it's kind of hard to give Martha a real role other than being a big stick, honestly. She focuses too much on one form of gameplay, and thus isn't very versatile. She is a pure, unadulterated buster servant, and not much can be really done to change that. 
Pair her with a servant that can feed her crit stars like Jack. Maybe pair her with Tamamo to help with her NP gain. But in the end, she's just a big stick. Yes, she can heal herself. And yes, she is a ruler. But aside from that, she's just a busted servant that can hit pretty hard. Regardless, she is still a solid 4 star servant. And if you want a ruler, she's not a bad option to go for. And definitely not a bad stick if you need one. Alright, now with the Jojo reference out of the way, let's go with the next Summer Servant, Castor Marie Antoinette. So with the swarm of meta-based servants, you're probably wanting another servant to mix things up a bit and give a bit more variety. Well, that's what Castor Marie is here for. First off, her deck is your typical caster deck. Arts cards everywhere! Each with five whole hits, with three hits for quick and one for buster. As per every other caster deck, it's quite obvious what the role is. Get out that NP as fast as possible. And while I won't exactly call her a spammer, it does the job pretty well. However, anything other than her arts card isn't going to be gaining very much. Just accept it. As a caster, it's interesting to learn that she has a low HP stat and a high attack stat for her class. Why would you want to attack on a caster with their negative multiplier? My guess is that with all the arts cards you're going to be using, you might as well do a bit more damage too, because she really won't be doing much without that trade-off. Her skills are an interesting case. They are overall a mix of both survivability, support, and offensive effects that allow her to become an interesting add-on to many teams. However, her main issue is that she doesn't have a particular focus, and ends up being a jack-of-all-trades. Her crit generation is pretty decent with her second skill, and even her first skill if paired with a male quick servant. But the issue is that they aren't consistent, especially with her second skill's long cooldown. She can heal herself and keep herself living longer with her third skill, as well as increase debuff resistance, which is a really underrated ability. So, I guess the main focus of those would be for survivability, which she can do really well. I'd chain her third and second skills in that order to keep her living the longest, although her second skill is heavily hindered by that long cooldown, so keep that in mind. Her Noble Phantasm is an AoE damage dealing NP that also decreases enemy attack chance while increasing ally critical damage. This NP works well when paired with a crit star generator, as the increased crit damage can help a lot for more offensive fun buttons. Marie is an interesting case of a servant. She's support arts based and meant to work in crit teams. Despite her arts deck, her noble phantasm gain isn't exactly ideal. Even with that 5 hit hit count on her arts card, her base Noble Phantasm gain is trash, so you might want to consider another servant to help her with that Noble Phantasm gain. Consider working her with team members to get most out of the crit buff that her NP gives off. If you want to take advantage as her ability as a crit support, maybe stick a 2030 on her so she can get out crits more consistently. In terms of actual crit creation, she doesn't do very well outside her second skill. So leave the crit generation to another servant like Ogita, Jack, Atalanta, or any solid crit generating assassin. Another good servant to pair with her is Nursery Rhyme, who is also arts based and whose first skill is specifically geared to doing more crit damage. If you want to create an arts based team like this though, Assassin Emya is what I'd recommend for a crit generator, since he is both arts based while being able to generate tons of crit stars. Overall, Marie is a very unique servant, being an arts-based, damage-dealing caster that also has the strange role of taking advantage of crit stars. She is definitely a servant that benefits from a good team comp, and doesn't particularly fare amazingly on her own. Still, she balances out reasonably as an offensive crit caster, and that alone is worth at least considering when rolling. Now we get to the main star of the part 2 gotcha. The 5 star of part 2, Archer Artoria, or as many people like to call her, Scortoria. Now, while I think that the other two in the gacha were relatively good 4 stars, when compared to Scortoria, there's no contest. 
She will be the main reason you'll be rolling this banner over part 1 if you're one of the few people who only care about gameplay. Why? Because Squirtoria is simply just one of the best archers in the entire game. At least in this humble player's opinion. Now as for why, let's get down to that right now. First off, her stats. Frankly, there's nothing really much to say here. Both her HP and attack stats are pretty average for a 5 star archer, which is not particularly a bad thing. It allows her to be both a balanced, consistent attacker, while being able to take a few hits without being a glass cannon. If you ask me, I wish more servants hit a mid ground like she does. You know what she also has? A good deck befitting to her purpose, with 2 3 hit art cards, 2 4 hit quick cards, and a single 1 hit buster card. As for her role, it is very simple and very effective. Spam her Noble Phantasm again and again and again and again and again. And let me tell you, she can do that very well. Now let's look at that Noble Phantasm you'll be firing off like a machine gun. Alright, so first of all, it is an arts based NP. Big surprise there. This clearly means more NP gain and more change with arts. Fantastic. It is a single target damaging NP. So even without the buster meme, you'll still be doing some reliable numbers with it. It also has a 70% chance to decrease the target's NP gauge, which can be a very nice bonus. However, what truly makes this NP great is the overcharge bonus. Being able to charge her NP at a rate like that can be a fantastic jumpstart into firing it off again. If you're chaining NPs, I easily recommend that you put this one as your last, because it'll just be a stronger first step to firing it off again. If you really know what you're doing, you could probably make her shoot off that NP every second turn, and that's nothing to scoff at whatsoever. This is the main reason you're ruling the part 2 gacha, because Squirtoria has finally done the original face of fate proper justice in this game. And now we get to her skills, which are, surprise, all fantastic. They allow her to be both versatile between offense and survivability, with buffs that complement both her and even her team. Her second skill might have an NP demerit, but for a lower cooldown as well as a heal like that, I'd say it's worth it, especially since Scortoria's NP gain is really no issue. She again, like a lot of other Summer Servants, can make other male teammates generate more crit stars with her third skill. So consider pairing her with a male crit generator or a male quick servant to generate some crits, which can help her too create some more NP gain. As for actual team comp, she's a simple servant, so you won't need to go too over the top in picking an appropriate CE. I'd stray away from CEs focusing on NP gain because she honestly doesn't need them at all. Instead, work to increase her damage, be it by command cards or crits. Really though, she's just versatile enough that she works with a majority of Cs out there that complement either crit or art servants. Heck, another ending is perfect on her, so definitely consider that. She also just pairs with a lot of servants in many different ways. So really just go wild experiment, you'll find many uses for her. If it isn't apparent, Scortoria is simply absolutely fucking fantastic. She is the definition of a good art servant, being able to spam her NP with a fantastic arts card while increasing her own arts damage and keeping herself consistently alive with little payoff. If that doesn't already sound good, she can even work relatively well in crit teams too, due to her third skill pairing with males, a good quick card, and that independent action passive. The only way she doesn't particularly work is if you want a 100% buster mean team. But even so, she's self-sufficient enough that she can survive on her own and generate enough NP gain for herself, so she won't be a huge hindrance. Overall. Squirtoria hits a lot of the marks for what makes a fantastic servant in my book. She's self-sufficient, relatively versatile in multiple types of team comp, simple to use, yet extremely effective in doing so. Good at doing damage, good at keeping herself alive, and is overall a complete blast to play. 
And as much as I love all the other servants on this list as well, if there is one servant I recommend aiming for in this event, it's Squirtoria, because she simply just knocks it out of the park. And with that, I have tediously gone through each servant, analyzed them, gave you my personal views and takes on their abilities, strengths, and weaknesses. And by now, hopefully I've convinced a number of you to roll for these babes if you haven't planned to already. Because if you're a fan of fun servants to play around with, you're gonna enjoy using them. They not only look the part, but they can play their part as well. And while I'll admit, some of these are definitely better than others, even the worst of them is something I'd still consider relatively good if you know what you're doing. And if you aren't already convinced to roll for these hot summer ladies, then fair enough. You do you, and save for whatever future servant that you might be waiting for. Musashi. Musashi. But to those who are interested in the servants that this hot summer holiday has to offer, I do hope that you will be delighted with how each of these girls can serve you. With that ending statement, I conclude this video. Thank you for sticking around and dealing with my awful mic quality. If it isn't apparent, I don't exactly have the highest budget, nor a very complicated workspace. I really just made this video for fun, and that's all that drove me. Regardless, thanks again for watching, and maybe I'll see you fellow Chaldean masters somewhere else on the forever expanding interwebs. But for now, this will be my farewell. Till we meet again.